There's an idea in the Sveshnikov variation of the Sicilian defense I want to talk about. I was white in this blitz game, and we played directly into the Sveshnikov, which occurs right here. Now, there are a couple ways to play. Um, you can play knight to d5 and occupy that hole in the middle of the board, or I like to play bishop takes uh, f6. Now, my opponent uh, made an inaccuracy and recaptured with the queen. Um, before we take a look at that, let's look at the main move here, which is g takes f6. Um, doubling the f-pawns, but this extra f-pawn can actually be useful. You can push it forward to f5 and attack uh, white's center pawn on e4. Okay, then white uh, continues with knight to d5, occupying that nice hole in the board. And uh, there are um, a couple different ways you can play here. Um, one way you can play is to try to get that knight out of this position by playing knight to e7 at the appropriate time. You can't play it right away because there's a mate right here, interesting little smothered mate. But you can prepare it by playing bishop to g7 to guard that pawn, and then perhaps bishop d3, and then knight to e7 to try to eject that knight out of e5. So that's one way to play. But the main line uh, continues with f5, trying to undermine the knight, get at that e4 pawn there. And there are uh, a couple moves you can make here. The main line continues c3 to get this knight back into the game. But the idea that I wanted to talk about in this video is this very interesting sacrifice, bishop takes b5. Okay, and it's a powerful move. Um, after a takes b5, knight takes b5, you'll notice both knights are pointed at that c7 square. And uh, black can't stop a knight from getting there. And that would be a fork on the king and rook. So normally what a player will do is move the rook out of the way. Rook to a5 is sensible and then knight b c7 check, and the king goes to d7, and you play from here. So white has uh, two extra pawns for his sacrificed bishop, and they're, you know, connected past pawns over here on the queen side, so it's pretty powerful, and black is kind of tied up. So it's an interesting position. Um, let's see what the engine thinks of it. Yeah, it thinks it's about equal. Okay, maybe slight advantage for black but uh, close to equal. It's an interesting position. Okay, but uh, as I said, the main move here is c3 instead of that interesting sacrifice. Um, and then a um, couple moves I want to talk about. The main move is bishop g7, um, and then black gets ready to castle. But a mistake that I sometimes see is f takes e4. That's too greedy. F takes e4 trying to get this pawn um, out of white's center so the knight is no longer anchored there. But there's a problem with that move, which is now bishop takes b5 is much more effective, as you'll see. Okay, If rook to a5 there, that's a blunder because knight uh, bc6, b, knight bc7 check forces the king to d7 and then white has a mate. Queen to g4, check, forces f5, and then a mate. Okay, and that's all the result of f takes e4, opening up this diagonal to the king. So you can't do that. All right, anyway, back to the game. Um, after I took on f6, my opponent did not take back with the g-pawn like you're supposed to do. He took back with the queen. And the problem with that is it simply loses a tempo. Knight to d5 was played, and notice the knight is heading towards the c7 square to fork the king and rook. So this forces the queen right back to d8. And white's up a tempo, and you can play um, c3 here and get into uh, mainline positions a tempo up. But I figured um, since white is a tempo up, I would give this bishop takes b5 sacrifice uh, a try. And I've never played it in this exact position before because nobody ever plays queen takes f6. But I gave it a try, and the engine approved. Um, in fact, it was the engine's uh, top choice. If you, if you let it go to depth 22, it says, yeah, take that pawn. Okay, and then a takes b5, knight takes b5, 
And now my opponent tried a queen to a5 check, forking the knight and the king. But I, I just simply blocked with the c-pawn because this knight cannot be taken. There would be a fork here, and the queen would be lost. Okay, so uh, my opponent saw a knight coming to c7, so he moves the king over. All right, and um, I make a mistake here. I didn't really know how to follow this up. I do have two pawns for my bishop, and like I said, I have uh, connected past pawns on the queen side. Um, but I shouldn't have played knight b c7 like you play in those other positions. And the reason is, well, now my opponent can just play rook to a7 and threaten to, to take both knights for a rook. And then he, he would be up a lot of material in that position. Okay, so the engine says I should just leave the knight on b5 and play something like a4 and just solidify my position and play from there. But anyway, um, I did make that move, and my opponent played rook a7. Um, I played b4, trying to complicate matters, and I got lucky. My opponent blundered with queen a3, which allows this fork. Okay, and then queen b2 was played. I took the rook, he took my knight, I castled, um, and uh, bishop comes out to e6. Okay, I want to infiltrate with my queen, attacking the knight on a7. He retreats the knight, uh, c4 to solidify my knight on d5. Queen to d4 attacks both of these pawns. I don't really want to lose either one, so I go for a check here on a5, king to e8, knight to c7 check, and I eliminate his bishop. f takes e6, queen to b5 check supports one of the pawns and gives me time to support the other pawn. King to c7. Rook f e1. Okay, now he wants to get his rook out. a4, and the a pawn is just too strong here. This should be a pretty easy win. Rook f8 attacks f2. I have to protect that. So I play rook a2. Rook f4 attacks e4 a second time, so I slide up, slide over my other rook to protect that. Knight b6. He's attacking c4. I'm going to let him have it. Uh, I play queen e8 to attack his bishop. He drops his bishop back. Uh, I play g3 to hit the rook. Rook f6. And then I push the a pawn. I let him have that c pawn, which actually looks dangerous to take because he's opening a, a file here to his king. a6. Knight comes in. He threatens a fork here on f3. Um, I really didn't have to worry about that. I should have just played rook to c1 check right here, and that would be a quick mate. Mate in 8, the computer announces. Uh, but instead, I move my king up to guard against that fork, and he plays knight f3, and now I really do move my rook over to the c file, and there's just no stopping mate. It's a mate in 6, according to the engine, but my opponent uh, gives me a mate in 2. He plays king to b3, and then I have a check, followed by a mate. All right, so I just wanted to discuss that interesting uh, sacrifice. Bishop takes b5 in the Sveshnikov. So watch out for that. Thanks for watching the video.